Oh, there's Warren's text. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. This is actually going to be the second recording session I have for this episode, and before I continue the playthrough, I want to go over a couple things real quick. First off, I want to apologize for not replying to anyone's comments in the past couple days, and that's not just for Life is Strange comments. It, I've been avoiding every single comment on every single video that I've posted, and that's because I am terribly, terribly, terribly scared of spoilers. Like, I try my best to reply to people's comments within a day, and I do read every single comment that I get. However, just a quick glance at my YouTube dashboard has kind of given me the feeling that I cannot interact with any of you until I finish this episode. Um, I've almost been spoiled several times now. I've not been spoiled yet. I've not been spoiled yet, but I've come goddamn close to it several times now. And on that note, I want to ask you all to please, 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 if you're going to post a comment containing spoilers, label the comment with a spoiler tag. Just write SPOILER in big, bold capital letters before you start your comment, and that way people who don't want it to be spoiled can just avoid reading it. I understand that, like, you might have finished the episode and you just want to discuss things, and that's totally cool. I love it. It's totally fine. But just please be considerate of the people that haven't finished playing it or haven't finished watching a playthrough yet. Um, like, including me. Like, I, I didn't sit down and blast through this episode in one go, obviously. So, you could be spoiling me and ruining everything. <laughs> so, please just, just do that. To everybody who has been labeling their comments with a spoiler tag, I want to thank you so, so, so very much. Like, you have no idea how much I appreciate how considerate you all are being to other people like I I can't thank you enough for for doing so so thank you um is that all I wanted to say oh one more thing everybody who's watching this and hasn't seen the complete playthrough yet or played the entire episode yourself yet and don't want to be spoiled just don't go to the comment section Seriously, just don't scroll down. If you have a burning desire to write a comment, just scroll down far enough for you to see that comment entry bo like box. Just don't go any further. Just just have the discipline not to spoil yourself. That's all I can say. It's up to you whether you do it or not, but if you don't want to be spoiled, just don't go down there. And yeah, that should be it. Let's continue. Um, Chloe told us to go and check out the garage. So we're going to do that right now after we snoop around the house a little bit. I think David is upstairs, so we can take this opportunity to check out everything. But it's super freaking quiet. Oh, there's the, uh, the news segment about the washed up whales. Those poor whales are like beached angels. What is going on here? Yeah, this is one of the reasons I knew that we were going to be in a- Wait, hold on a fucking second. I- during the trailer, I saw this, and I, that was one of the pieces of evidence I used to assume that we were going to start in the alternate timeline. But now that we're back in the regular timeline and beach whales are still happening, that means that the disasters are not exclusive to certain timelines. That is interesting. That is interesting. You would think that the butterfly effect would make the disasters be different. But no, in the alternate timeline, the birds are still dead. This, this just this just makes me think even more that it's all a farce like this is all a dream that's that's that just helps that argument you know yeah looks like they're back on the road to Paris yeah rough rough dude Joyce really wants David and Chloe to be a family I accept your offer of dinner and a movie Maybe Chloe would like to come along. I'll call you later. Kisses and hugs, Joyce. Oh, looks like David is trying to make up for what happened during episode three. And is the, yeah, the butterfly is still there. My butterfly sketch doesn't exist in this timeline. Like William. Max the time bandit strikes again. Oops, I spoke way too soon. I had a had a lapse in memory and forgot that we we drew that butterfly when we were like a little girl. To think this all started with my vision of a tornado. Okay, Arcadia Bay Beacon, Eco Apocalypse Now. 
While Arcady Bay was until now considered a quaint fishing and tourist nook in the Oregon coast, the town that time forgot is, since the beginning of this week, in the literal eye of an environmental storm. Starting with a freak snowfall, an unprecedented eclipse, dying birds, and now half a dozen beached whales, Arcadia Bay's strange weather is being studied by prominent state and national scientists, apparently including NASA. What's even more incredible than these eco-phenomena is the fact that not a single meteorologist has offered any actual theory or even reason for this atmospheric havoc. Really, you'd think people would get on this shit right away and come up with something. I mean, look at what a lot of YouTubers are doing. This is just a game, but we're on this shit like fucking white on rice, yo. Oh, a bagel! Eat the bagel! Somehow, I existed in this whole other reality. But I, I don't know what happened. The more I use my power, the more I see how little control I have over what happens. Thank you for realizing this. Now Max Caulfield exists in two, or maybe three different realities. How can I have a destiny? Yeah. I wonder if Chloe would hate me for keeping her alive. But I couldn't do it. Thinking about all these lifelines almost makes my head hurt worse than the rewind. Okay, this is one reason why I find this game so incredibly fascinating. It seems like a far-fetched idea, of course, time travel and like jumping time and space and everything, but if... Let's, let's take a moment and hypothetically talk about this. If this could really happen, what would reality be for this girl? What is reality to Max, really? She can jump every single time, or, or not every, she can jump time and space and she can choose the timeline she remains in. She could have chosen to remain in the alternate timeline. She could have chosen not to jump back in time to try and save William. So the question here is, what is reality? And this is what I find completely fascinating, because I think reality is what you make of it. She was questioning for a second ago whether or not alternate timeline Chloe would be pissed off with alternate timeline Max for not, you know, obeying her wishes and, you know, cranking up the IV to 11. But does that matter? Does it really matter? We have Chloe here with us now, in this timeline that we started in. Personally, I don't give two fucks about what timeline we st that, that Max started in. She could be doing this for thousands of years for all I care. The only thing I care about is this timeline because this is the reality that we as players start with. You know? So you get to choose what your reality is. Which is why I think the concept of Max jumping time is so incredible. You get to choose the life you want to continue living. It's it's better than most people get. You know, it's it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty neat. There's probably a, a lot more to say. I have a lot more to say about it, but I... the most expensive restaurant in town. David knows how to get on Joyce's good side. Damn. Six course couples dinner with endless wine. 260. Shit. Yeah, there's a lot more that I could talk about, but if I did that, you know, we wouldn't get anywhere. <laughs> Let's continue on and check. Oh, is that him? Yes, it is. So David wasn't in his room. Might as well go talk to him. Since we have the chance to. It looks like David finished his car repairs. Maybe there's some new clues around. Oh, there's a locker back there. I never noticed that. Yeah. I have. Okay. I got really lucky. Hey, Max. I do appreciate you standing up for me. No problem, bro. Just. Try not to be so much of a dick in the future. Um, I have really no idea how this hasn't been spoiled for me. The, top, the couple times that I've glanced at my YouTube dashboard and saw like new comments, I've seen specific keywords that have made me look away 
so I've just been lucky that it wasn't anything completely spoilerific. Most people have been really cool though, and not said anything. What the hell did David do for Nathan? And what did his dad do for David? Mr. Madsen, thank you for your help with Nathan. It is appreciated. Sean Prescott, what the fuck is this? Okay. This is definitely connected to that little document that we found on Principal Wells' S about Nathan and David. Like, like there was a, a little piece of reading, piece of, uh, piece of writing that was like talking about how he follows David Madsen, right? How Nathan follows David Madsen? Oh, that makes me sad. It was so incredible to see William again. I wish Chloe could too. Nah, man, that'll just crush her. That'll just crush her real good. Files. Good thing you dropped the files in oil, Max. It's okay. Yuck. Sorry, but this is my official man cave, so... No girls allowed. I don't see a sign anywhere. Should I have signed the petition? Blackwell sure isn't safe and private anymore. From Raymond Wells to David Madsen sent... I uh, don't know, doesn't matter. Despite our rather heated discussion about the successful petition to block a campus surveillance system, I am still interested in your feedback on other methods of improving Blackwell's security. We must find a middle ground between safety and privacy for our students. Best Principal Wells. David really did protect Chloe. I'm glad I stuck up for him. From David Madsen to Officer Barry. Howdy, Andy. Just wanted to let you know that Chloe was actually with me the other night and not at Blackwell. I almost wish she had been because I caught her with more weed, so I had to put the fear of God and country into her, not to mention the threat of kicking her ass out of the house. These kids are so goddamn entitled, as you know. Just wanted to let you know so Chloe's mother doesn't think her daughter was breaking into her old alma mater. Chloe's allergic to school now. Thanks, and let's get together for our two whales breakfast, my treat, Dave. So I fucking knew it, dude. He loves this girl. He does. He's just a shit parent. Because he's never been a parent. Like, think about it. What is happening here? You got a guy who's got PTSD has obviously poor social interaction skills coming into a family that wasn't his own up until the time where david started dating joyce i'm pretty sure they were still kind of heartbroken over william they still the two of them chloe and Bro joyce still are heartbroken over william so he feels like an outsider trying to fit in and he doesn't have any experience with kids so he doesn't know how to deal with it and a teenager is probably the the worst age to to basically replace someone's father it sucks I've seen I've seen a clip of David slapping Chloe in the face he's a shit parent and an, kind of a bad adult too for doing that it's ir it's what is the term I'm looking for it's irresponsible and it's unforgivable it is unforgivable but at least I have proof now that he does look out for Chloe. Makes me feel better about defending him. Surveillance cameras at Pan Estates? David must be working for the Prescotts too. Oh. Oh, I f mother fucking knew it. Okay. Alright, man. Alright, so. This playthrough is gonna be so fucking long. I'm so sorry, everybody. But I was hoping that this playthrough is like the playthrough for this episode won't be as long as the playthrough for episode three. But I think this one just might be as long or longer. I mean, this is part four, I think, and I've only gotten one optional picture. This is ridiculous. But anyway, something that I've been thinking about for a long time is whether surveillance is inherently good or bad. Like in the beginning, in, ep in episode 1, you kind of presented the idea of surveillance through a bias because Miss Grant is really cool and she wanted you to sign a petition to stop the, the surveillance system at Blackwell. So it's kind of a bias, but is surveillance really that bad? 
Surveillance is kind of bad if you're up to no good. But if you're minding your own damn business, not doing anything wrong, all it is is an evasion of privacy, or it could be there to protect you. David was trying to set up surveillance systems at the school, and now at Pan Estates, which the Prescott family owns. Who is the common denominator here? It's Nathan Prescott. I think this man is trying to figure out what is going on at these Vortex parties and the weird shit happening at Blackwell Academy. Maybe he's trying to help find Rachel. Maybe he's not all bad, you know? Fuck, I knew it. I fucking knew it. You're a bro, dude. I wonder if David is going to the party. You're a dick. But there's some decency in you. What up, Buck's head? Locker. School lockers. Whoa, that is a serious padlock on that locker. Hey, David, what you hiding? Don't worry, man. We're gonna bust in sooner or later. Looks like I need a key or code. Oh. I know this padlock. Do you? Looks like I need a key or code. Oh, was it? I know this padlock. I don't... I don't remember this padlock. I don't remember this padlock. Actually, I do, but I don't remember the code. For once, I don't have time to search for the code. I need to find a key. Shit. I could probably cheat and, like, go through my old footage. <laughs> I could probably go through my old footage and, uh... And... Get in there. But I don't want to stop playing right now. Oh, a nest! Oh, look at the baby blue jay eggs in the nest. I, I better move his plank if I want to take the shot. Oh, fuck. Wait. Oh, there are, it's blue jays. Wait a minute. Blue jays. Oh, look at the baby blue jay eggs in the nest. I, I better move his plank if I want to take the shot. Huh. So Max calls some blue jays. Here's the weird thing, though. Blue Jays, actual Blue Jays, they don't live on the west coast where Oregon is. That's Scrub Jay territory. Blue Jays live on the east coast. So I don't know if this is some kind of weird, like, a weird thing that Donut messed up on? Excuse me. Just one picture, please. Weird. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe I'll figure it out later. Another photo from my Arcadia Bay wildlife series. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, thank you. Sleep tight, my eggy wags. I gotta go upstairs. I gotta go upstairs. Oh, no. No. The, I, I think I closed... I shoot the bird that was upstairs out and then I closed the window. Oh, fuck. If that bird... I give up, William, but defend David? But Chloe hate me if she knew. Fuck, shut up. Just keep it to yourself. There's no way I can go to Chloe without going to David's locker. God damn it. If... If that bird was the one that laid those eggs, then those eggs are doomed if I don't let that bird back in the house. Fuck. Okay, well, we'll check the backyard and then talk to David, then get into his locker, and then... We'll get back upstairs eventually. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Please let me save those eggs. Oh, I would that would suck. I'd feel like a little bird murderer. Bongo? Anything oh, just the house. William never finished painting that wall. Yeah. What's in the bag? David even made sure to bag up the dead birds. Mm. Dang. Basketball's still up there, huh? Looks like there's nothing to see at all. So, let's go talk to David. I wonder if there was... Oh, there's the keys? Ah, oh, the keys to the kingdom. Or at least David's locker. 
Let's talk to him first before we try any sneaky shit. Wait, I thought I could talk to him earlier. Excuse me, Max. Do not touch one goddamn thing. <laughs> Come on, Max. Find a way to get David out of his cave. I do appreciate you standing up for me. Uh, if I could just remember that padlock code, we, this wouldn't be a problem. This would not be a problem at all. Shit, I wonder if that's some kind of reward that don't not set up for people who wrote things down. <laughs> I mean, I can, guess I can just go and and um play a different chat. Nah, fuck it, whatever. Let's do things the hard way. I like doing things the hard way. Uh, blah, blah, cardboard box, William stuff. What can I do to get him distracted? Oh, fuse box. But this is my official man game, so no this fuse box looks like a perfect David distraction. I can't let David see me while I snag his keys. Enter the ninja. Son of a bitch! I just fixed that fuse box. Yeah, it sucks, dude. Shit. Hey! Oh, got in trouble. Dang. That sucks. I'll just walk over here to pretend like I never had anything to do with that. Yeah, I never had anything to do with that. Did I actually do it? Fuck, I didn't complete it. Okay. Oh, go through. Uh, go through the door. Tamper. I can't let David see Mr. It's that fuse box. And go through the door. Relax, Chloe. I'm doing good. Don't worry about it. It's amazing how much drama this living room has seen. Gotcha. Got him. But how hey. the hell? Shit. Oh my, no. Why does it keep doing this? Like, I can't stop the rewind if I click... Shit. <laughs> Oh god, well I went all the way back and Anything I can do for you, Max? I I was just waiting for Chloe to get out of the bathroom so we can go. I owe you one. So I'll pretend what you just said is true, Missy. Excuse me. That's Miss Caulfield. Yes, sir. You and Chloe still better be careful where you wander. There are a lot of dark places in Arcadia Bay. What do you mean by dark places? I can't tell you everything that's going on in Blackwell, and you've seen too much already, so please stay out of this, Max. Too late. I already know way too much. Like the fact that you might be working for Sean Prescott. What? Who told you that? Nathan Prescott? That little shit-ass is lucky he didn't get suspended. I don't think luck had anything to do with it. I could have been suspended, too. I didn't have all the evidence at the time. I... I am sorry, Max. So, are you going to tell me why you think I'm working for Sean Prescott? You know, I'm so thankful that the game rewinded all the way to the beginning. Like, I can't press LB because it just, in, instead of stopping at the next checkpoint, it just goes all the way back. But, you know what? In this situation, I'm glad that happened because now we can actually converse. And, uh, just, just like taking a listen to, um, listening to David's conversation patterns, there's something I really noticed about this guy. He isn't inherently saying negative things, he just delivers the shit he says in a very aggressive manner, which kind of makes him, like, come off like an asshole. I don't think he actually said anything that's really hurtful. Like, just now, he didn't really say anything that's that hurtful. I mean, he was even trying to warn Max to be careful, but he just said it in a really shitty way. <laughs> I saw documents that you were hired to do surveillance and security at Pan Estates. God damn. You are a good detective. Fuck yeah. But I didn't get hired. I gave Sean Prescott an estimate. For my own reasons. Anyway, I think we can both agree it's been a hard week on all of us. Especially poor Kate Marsh. Oh, 
No, no, he... That's so mean. Nobody helped Kate. Dude, you... If you wanted to say nobody helped Kate, you're either... You either really don't like David or you didn't realize that he was running towards the fucking door. Like he was on the scene. Shit. But yeah. Just let me help you, David. Let me help you investigate. I tried to help Kate. You did, Max. You saved her life like a hero while I left the goddamn dorm roof wide open. I knew Kate was feeling desperate. You even made it to the roof before me or anybody. I knew Kate was desperate too. So did Mr. Jefferson. And I got him suspended for what? That guy is an elitist prick. And I'm off duty, so I can say it at home behind his back. <laughs> like when Chloe calls me step douche. These artists live in a fantasy world. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't mean yeah, like I agree with that artists live in a fantasy world, but but yeah, I agree that Jefferson's kind of a dick. He, there's more to that man that he leads others to believe. See, like, Jefferson looks good in front of people on purpose. David looks terrible in front of people by accident. I can understand that, and I can, I can kind of sympathize with that. That's why I don't think he's as bad as he is. He's a dick. Don't get me wrong, I'm gonna keep on having to clarify that. He is a jerk. But he's not evil. Why do you say that? These art farts are all about themselves. When I was in the service, I hated the photographers who tried to pose me in their anti-war bullshit. Well, Blackwell Academy is a school for artists, so maybe this isn't the best place for you. I have a family here, Max. And I think Blackwell is the best place for me, since only I know what's happening. Of course, thanks to Mrs. Grant and her hippie anti-surveillance petition, I hope everybody feels safer, like Rachel Amber and Kate Marsh. Although, you're like a walking surveillance system. I appreciate you standing up for me, but I have to be a hard ass and tell you and Chloe to stay the hell out of this. Things are just gonna get more ugly. Chloe and I can take care of ourselves. Now, excuse me, Max. I have to get back to my camera. See? I'm an artist, too. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. This is one of those moments where there's a schism in... Hey, Max. I do appreciate you standing up for me. David will not leave if I ask him nicely, so... I need to create a major distraction. This is one of those moments where I just, like, shrug and say, like... It's just people's viewpoints. He's a very military-minded person. Hey, Missy, you do know I can see you snooping around. I don't think he appreciates art the way artists do. I think that's obvious. Sorry, Max. I can't talk and work. But yeah, yeah, like, I'm gonna take that as pretty much proof that David is trying to help out with the Rachel Amber Sorry, case. But this is my official man case, so no girls allowed. I am the key master. Oh, maps, notes, coordinates, photos of Kate, Nathan. Oh, yes. Oh, also, something I forgot to mention, like right after that conversation, it's moments like that, like that exchange between Max and. David, it's moments like that where I really have this, like, this split between the immersion because Max says a lot of shit that I disagree with. Like, she got, oh, I don't know, she, she got kind of snippy, understandably so, of course, like, David's been kind of terrible to her, Chloe, and a lot of people that Max cares about, but, you know, gotta look at the greater picture. The man clearly said, and it's proven through his actions, that he is trying to help. So you can at least keep that in mind when you talk to him about stuff, you know? I get it. It was really offensive what he said about artists, especially since Max is an artist. But everybody's got an opinion. Shit. 
Oh, what? The oh, Twin Peaks. Wait. Wait, what? Back well, Kate Marsh, you know something. Twin Peaks. Highlighted. That's Chloe's license plate. He's been tracking her light. He's been motherfucking tracking her truck. He knows where Chloe is all the fucking time. Hmm. If he wanted to use this information to punish her, he could have already. I would pose a guess that David's been using the, like these uh, coordinates to to follow Chloe's activities and see if he can find evidence. Like this would be a good way to find out where American Rust is and maybe investigate that area later on. He was even there didn't while Warren got his, his shit kicked out. Damn. Oh yeah, of course he was running uh running up to Nathan after um Chloe picked up Max. That's right. T W L C H T Z N Twilight Twilight Zone. Ah oh. oh fuck. Wait. Hold on. Alright, so we got photos of two red trucks. One's license plate is Twilight Zone. The other is something is that something finder? Is that Pathfinder? Probably not. Why are there two red trucks, almost identical looking, but they have two different license plates? Oh, also the exhaust is on. Oh, there's dual exhaust too, so. Rachel better pay me up. He's taking photos of Max too. Wonder if that's done on purpose. Two red trucks, two different license plates. Score. Back to Chloe now. Yeah, I can honestly see why Chloe and Max are friends. There's often times where um, the game presents them as very, very different people, but there are moments... It's amazing how much drama this living room has seen. But there are moments like that exchange between Max and David where you realize that, yo, these two girls, both are... Uh, they can have an attitude. Yo, Chloe! Are you ready yet? I have to get back to my dorm. Are we happy? Very happy. I hit the secret file jackpot. It's Kate, Nathan, and Rachel. Plus there's some location coordinates. David is like a one-man surveillance army. Now let's get the hell out of here before we get busted. But I absolutely have to go see Kate in the hospital right now. Yes! I want to find out how she's doing. Fuck yes! No! No, go back. Open the window. Open. No. I fucked up. I've, I've killed those baby birds. Oh fuck! I feel like it. I feel like a dick. <laughs> 